Hey, ADF fans, welcome back to the channel. I was building a data flow here inside of my data factory today uh, with just a source and a sync because I want to demonstrate for you how to use the change data capture, the native CDC change data capture capability in Azure Data Factory. So you see that on the screen, I have uh, a very simple data flow, just a source and a sync. My source is an Azure SQL database. This CDC capability will work with um, Azure SQL database, SQL Server, and with um, uh, with Manage Instance. But what I want to talk about is the native CDC feature that we uh, landed within Data Factory and announced at our Ignite conference very recently. Now, nothing is different here. You don't have to change anything there. But if you go to your source options, you can either just take your existing data flows and make this change without changing your logic at all, or when you make a new data flow, what you'll do is you'll select Enable Change Data Capture. Really super easy to do. Now, I have some previous videos on the channel, on the YouTube channel, for enabling incremental extract, and that's still there. Um, enabling incremental extract still tells Data Factory to maintain a checkpoint for you, but it maintains a watermark. So you need to provide a date time column from your source table for that to work. Um, if you enable native change data capture, what we do is we use uh, the SQL service CDC capability to be able to get the inserts, updates, and deletes from the source, and you don't need to have a date time column then. So it's a very nice feature. And the same thing is you just enable it here from the checkbox, say enable a native change data capture. And for this demo, I have selected start reading from beginning. You don't need to do that. Um, this is because I want to run and show you in the demo that I can essentially perform a full load on the first run. And then every incremental from there will be the incremental load. And Data Factory will fully maintain that checkpoint for you. And you can reset it if you need to, but you don't have to do anything else with it. So you don't need to worry about any of the other configuration. Just turn on CDC on your source and then enable native change data capture within Data Factory. Okay, so we're in the designer and I was building a data flow. And when you're doing that and you're debugging, and you're, you, know, you have your debug session on, and you go through data preview, the data preview will ignore change data capture, just give you the rows, all the rows from the source. It does not mess at all with the checkpointing. The checkpoint is not used for this uh, when you're in design mode, only at runtime. Now, if you're at all familiar with AdventureWorks, you'll notice that this is the products table from the AdventureWorks OLTP database. And let me actually show you the, um, I'll show you the SQL Server Management Studio uh, with the rows uh, in the table. And essentially that's what you're seeing in the data preview as well. So we've loaded the data into data preview through Spark because this is a data flow. And you're seeing that in my data factory. All right, so let me just add that. Now I think we're pretty much all set up. Let me just double check. So we've got our source set to a Azure SQL database. I'm pointing to um, this products table, which is my, my data set, which points to the products table in the AdventureWorks sales, L, sales LT uh, database schema. And I have the source option set to enable change data capture. I think we're ready to go. So I'm going to go over to a pipeline now to actually test this. You need to uh, have this execute a runtime to get the checkpoint. So when I add this data flow to my pipeline, you'll see under the activity settings that you have this checkpoint key right here. The so checkpoint key is a GUID. It's a unique value that identifies uh, that pipeline. You can override this to reset it if you'd like. Um, so this can be parameterized and you can reset it on your own sort of triggering mechanism. So it doesn't have to be reset manually. You can use a um, you can use this um, this field with add dynamic content. So it can be dynamically set. Now, I think we're at a good point to actually go ahead and run this. And while we're doing it, I'll show you what, where I'm landing the data and what I'm doing with the data while it's running in the background. This is how you run a cooking show. Uh, let it marinate or bake, and then explain what's going on. So notice I'm running this from debug mode. I don't need to publish. I don't need to run it from a trigger. I'm just running this in debug, and the checkpointing will start. Now, let me go back into the data flow and, and explain to you what I'm doing with the data. A very common scenario that we see emerging um, with customers today is that you're leveraging uh, data lakes. And particularly when you take data from a database, you may want to land that data in a Delta Lake format. So I'm going to sync the data into Delta Lake. Now, very simple data flow. I don't have any transformation. This is just source to sync just to build the Delta Lake uh, lake house, essentially, right? But you can use any of the transformations within data flow and you can use your existing data flows and just turn on CDC. It, it doesn't you know, require any changes to your logic. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to use my uh, my ADLS Gen 2, my uh, data lake, and I'm going to create a Delta lake from my products table. So I've pointed to a, a container, my container, and a folder which I call products. So the first run that we're running here, this is going to build that Delta lake for me. It's going to build it from scratch, and we'll see it's going to be all the rows 
from that source table running the background. Okay, so we're at about one minute of execution. If I look at the details of the run, you'll see that there it is, it completed. So it wrote 296 rows, so it read all the rows because we had the checkbox set for, let me go back to the editing, go back to the data flow. We had it set for read from beginning. You don't need to set that. If you only want to get incrementals, you don't need to do the full load like I do, just deselect that box. Okay, so now let's go over to the management studio and let's do a count on that to make sure we have that right, 296 rows, and that is correct. So we read all the rows and wrote them to Delta Lake. Let's go look at our Delta Lake. So over my storage explorer, I have my uh, Delta Lake open. This is essentially the folder products within my container that I built as a brand new Delta Lake through my data factory data flow. It created this um, and hydrated this Delta Lake for me. Now those are snappy compressed parquet files. So to read those, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go back to my data factory. And I have a little technique that I like to use that you may use as well, uh, which is I have a data flow that sits in the background that I don't ever really publish or use from a pipeline. If I don't even have a sync on it. Instead what I do is I just use it to read my, um, my Delta Lake and my parquet files. So I have the source as that same Delta Lake that we built and, and hydrated. So the source option is going to point to that same products folder, that same Delta Lake table. And now in a data preview, I should see 296 rows that match exactly what was in SQL are now in my Delta Lake. Very, very simple to do this part of it. And what I have on here is as well as I'm just using aggregate so I get the full count of all the rows so that you can see that as we progress through the rest of the demo and we delete rows and add rows and update and so on. And there we are with all of the 296 rows. So I don't even need to run the aggregate on this because it's pretty obvious in here that we had the same number of rows and the right number of rows were written into Delta Lake. This is reading the Delta Lake that we hydrated from this pipeline. Okay, so next step, let's update a row. Let's see what happens when a row is updated. Now I've not changed anything on my on data flow. Everything is still exactly the same. So all we have to do is go back to the pipeline. And I'd say, before I update a row, let me just prove something to you. I'm gonna just debug this right right away here, do it again without making any changes to the source database table. So what do you think should happen? Um, should I pause the video and let you answer that? Uh, what's gonna happen is no rows are gonna be read because nothing has changed. I'll give you the answer. Um, and so we'll just let this run for a little bit in the background and I'll show you that that is exactly what happens. And I'm gonna pause the video while this is finished marinating and then we'll go ahead and update the database table. Alrighty, we are back. If we take a look, we will see that zero rows were written. Great, so no rows are read because nothing changed. So this is a really effective way to make your pipelines work much faster, much more efficiently, but not need to go and re-read all the rows from the source or to have to manage that yourself. Now let's go back to the management studio. And let's update a single row. So I'm going to update. I probably did this demo once or twice already, so I'm gonna go ahead and change this color to something else. Let's change it to yellow. I'm gonna change the color of product ID 680. We'll execute that. Now we'll go and run the pipeline again. Again, this is you know, mimicking an, an uh, automated scheduled pipeline that is triggered by, let's say, a schedule, which means that um, you don't ever have to you know, click the debug button like I am, but Data Factory is maintaining that checkpoint. So the next time it runs, it'll pick up that change row for you without you needing to do anything at all on your side as a data engineer or data integration uh, professional. You'll just write your ETL code, put it into your pipeline and let it do its thing. Okay, let me go into the introspection activity monitoring for that data flow. Let me just click it pause while this is finishing. Okay, we're back and it succeeded. Uh, so now what we should see when we are done, and then to show you that just one row was read because there was just the single updated row that in SQL, what we do is we're gonna go into the data flow source transformation. If I click on it in the monitoring, you'll see the number of rows calculated, one row. So one row was read just because we had that single update. Now, let's go ahead and delete a row. And Data Factory will handle this for you as well. So if I go back to my SQL Server Management Studio, first, before I delete, I'm going to actually insert a row. Because I'm going to insert a row and then delete that row. So here's a sort of a dummy row that is, um, the product is rocket ship and it's my rocket ship. And because it's my rocket ship, the color's purple. And this will insert one row. So let's go ahead and execute that. Okay, so now we should have 297 rows in the source database table. Let's do a select count. And back on Data Factory, what will happen now if we run this is we should see the counts. 
increase to 297 as well, and only one row is being processed again. Refresh, and then pause, and we'll come right back. Okay, we're back, and on this run, again, we processed just one row, which was the uh, single new incoming row. So now if I go back to my Delta viewer, and if I preview the data, we should see on the aggregate count, we should see 297 rows. Another way, another way to view this, like I was doing earlier, is if you go over to the source and you refresh on here, on the data preview, you should see the count over here on the right-hand side. The run, one reason why I think it's easier to see it here on the aggregate is just because you're just getting just the count. And the viewer within Data Factory only brings back about, I think it's 100 rows is the max that it can bring back from the uh, view, viewing pane. You can export more if you go to down here and you go to, that is not how you do it. When you have the um, outputs, you can go here and say export to CSV and you can export top 1000. But um, if you don't get that row in the top 100, it won't show. So it's just easier to show you here that the count is 297. So we insert a new row. Again, no changes at all in Data Factory. It just maintains this checkpoint and does that for you. Now we can do the delete. Let's delete this dummy row that I added. Let's get rid of my rocket ship. And we will go and execute the delete command against that product ID. Okay. Uh, now let's go back to Data Factory and let's run again. And then back to the pipeline, the debug. Put it in the oven for a minute and I'll be right back. All right, we are done. So now let's go back to the view delta, update the aggregate, and we should see 296 by 296 rows. So I'll come back to that in a second uh, while it's it's calculating, but there's one important, another important thing I wanna show you, which is that you may be asking yourself is how do you decide what you wanna do with those rows? Maybe you don't want to delete things that were deleted on the source on your target. You have absolute control over that. In the data flow itself, on the sync, on any database sync, and Delta Lake is considered a database sync. Um, there's under settings in the data flow, you will see these four update options, insert, delete, upsert, and update. Um, these are set, these are based upon row markers for each row that comes into the sync. Now, typically within data flow, when you're doing this yourself, when you're, it's not a self, when it's not an EDF managed feature like native CDC is, you need to create policies within an, in an, um, a transformation that's known as the alter row transformation. The alter row will let you set policies for update, insert, and delete, and upsert. You don't need to do that because the row marker is coming in from native CDC already. So you just tell us what you want to do. So in this case, I am having all these sets, and I am using the product ID as my key column. So you will need to set a key column for this to work so that Data Factory and SQL knows what your uh, in this case, actually Delta Lake, knows what your um, uh, targets matching key columns or key columns are. That can be a composite key as well using the plus sign. You can deselect these. If you don't want to delete, just deselect delete and don't delete then uh, when you are using this feature. It's completely up to you. But you don't need to use an alter row. You don't need to set the row markers. Those are coming in for you automatically and maintained through CDC by Data Factory. Um, I think I was just going to show you the count back down to 26, so all the operations work, and that's how you do it. Really super. One last thing before we go, um, let me go really quickly back to my management studio, and I do want to show you the setup you need to do for your um, your databases. So I had to enable CDC on the database first, which is the um, the system function that you see here. Now this is all documented in uh, the Microsoft documentation for SQL Server, uh, but I just want to show you how I was able to do. And then on the table itself, I enabled uh, CDC enable table. I used that function and I called that here to enable the uh, product table to have change data capture enabled and that was it. And everything else worked from there. All right, so I think that does it. I hope you found this helpful, um, informative, and thank you for using Data Factory. And um, hopefully this feature makes things really super simple for you going forward. Talk to you next time.